Binding and state management are useful ideas for e-commerce pages. Imagine this. You visit an online shopping site to buy a new shirt. First, you search through the products and choose one. When you get to the selected products page, you might see additional options, such as different fits, different sizes, and different colors. As you select these options, the page you see might change. For example, the picture might update to match the green shirt you selected. The price might change as you pick a different fit or size. And maybe an error message could appear if the options you selected are sold out. Other parts of an online shopping pages also show dynamic content. When you log into your account, you might see your name displayed in the top right corner. You might see a shopping cart icon with a number badge indicating the number of products in your cart. Now imagine another user is using the same page at the same time that you are. They'll have different things in the shopping cart. They'll probably have chosen different product options. The user's information will be stored on a server, but also in users' browsers in state variables. This is how the same site can look different for different users at the same time. Here's an example of how you'd make this work as a web developer. Let's say that our site has a message that greets the customer by name, and a shopping cart that shows the number of selected items, and maybe a subtotal section. Our state variables store the logged in user and the contents of their shopping cart. To make a personalized greeting, we can bind the text value of the greeting to ask users to sign in by default or to include the user's name if they're logged in. We can bind the text attribute of the subtotal price span tag to show the price of the items in their cart. Finally, we can bind the disabled property of the checkout button to whether or not the shopping cart contains exactly zero items. The checkout button is disabled by default, but once a user adds an item to their cart, the button will be enabled. We now have an idea of how we could create an online shopping site using bindings and state variables. First, we need to store each product option's value in a state variable. We need pricing and availability information that corresponds to product options. For example, we need to know the price of a green men's XL shirt versus a women's red S shirt. Finally, we need to bind the selected option variables to dynamic fields that depend on those options, like the price, the visibility of an out-of-stock error message, and the product image. In this next exercise, we'll create a basic e-commerce product page like the one in our case study. We're going to create a sample product customization page, practice complex binding expressions, and experiment with initial state variables. As you can see over here, our product is a shirt that can be customized by fit, men's or women's, size, small, medium, or large, and the color, red, green, or blue. On our product page, the product description and price will change based on the user's selections. Also, the shirt's image will change when the user selects a color. Remember, we're not going to build this product page inside Chico's Cheese Bikes. This is a separate site. We'll use a special glitch repository for this exercise. This glitch repository contains basic CSS and HTML to lay out the product page, state variables describing the cost of the product, upcharges for various options, and URLs for the various product images. The glitch also contains an AMP state component to hold state variables with initial values. You'll find the link to this repository in your video description. Remember to remix it so that you can edit it. And now here's the data we'll use in this exercise. The ID of the AMP state component is product data. So for example, to get to the base price for an item, you'd use product data dot base price. We've also got here some customization options and how much each of them raises the item's price, which is called an upcharge. For example, product data dot upcharges dot size dot medium is the upcharge for a medium t-shirt. To get the shirt's final price, just add that upcharge to the price. Finally, the images section contains URLs for shirt images. Using the AMP bind and AMP state documentation, update the basic product page to meet these requirements. When the user updates the fit, size, or color select inputs, store the new values in the state variables in the AMP state component with ID options data. The image of the t-shirt should correspond to the color options selected by the user. The P tag containing the product description should update to reflect the currently selected product options. 
the span tag containing the dollar portion of the product price should update to reflect the base product price and any upcharges related to the currently selected product options. Here's a hint. You can use the value of a state variable to retrieve another state variable. For example, the upcharge for the selected shirt size is product data dot upcharges dot size, and then you put brackets options data dot size. Now, pause the video and try this out. And here's the solution. First of all, here are our select tags. Notice that our event handlers update a state variable whenever the change event occurs. For example, when the product size select box changes, the options data dot size state variable gets updated to the value of event dot value. And here are the changes to the rest of the product page. The AMP image component already had a default source attribute. Now we've added a bound source attribute that shows the shirt of the right color. The description paragraph tag combines the option types and option values into a new string. Finally, in the price span, we add the base price to the appropriate upcharges. To see all the code for this solution, check the link in the video description.